Shout out to Vara Dark. Why throw away Jin's story? I mean, come on. He says that he doesn't like it. I think that that's bullshit. Jin's story is extremely compelling to get the flashbacks of when he was learning how to become a samurai, all of his memories with his family, like his uncle, and we also see him form these new relationships. I just think that his story is extremely, extremely good. Joel just says, don't see don't why we should throw away Jin's story to overthrow a story because it has a male as the lead for the sake of diversity is just really bad because as the next person says a potential sequel should either create someone entirely new or hand over the reins of the story to yuna the story should always come first and everything else should come second they already have an amazing story here if you already have an amazing story you just don't dismantle it to push a narrative into it in the end a lot of journalists are saying that they think ghost of tsushima 2 should hand the reins over to a female and i don't necessarily agree with that i think that they have an amazing story going for them and they should continue jin's journey i don't think that it's bad that people are asking will you consider adding a female into the lead especially if they do not continue jin's journey but what makes me angry is that people like these journalists are completely overlooking jin and his existing story because he's a male welcome back to the channel everyone i'm saladino Dreams what I'm chasing, blow hot is chasing. This is why I'm hot, no, that is why I'm blazing. Dil <laughs> I guess I just assumed that the sequel to Ghost of Shishima would be called Ghost of Shishima 2 Electric Boogaloo. <laughs> so when I saw the thumbnail on YouTube, I was watching YouTube on uh, TV, so I was kind of just bouncing around. But when I saw the thumbnail, I was like, what is this? I didn't realize it was Ghost of Shishima. I thought it was an up res version of that game. I think it's called Trek to Yomi. That's a little uh, indie game. So I was like, what is this? And then I kind of was just bouncing around. And then I happened to catch a thumbnail or you know headline saying something to the effect of Ghost of Tsushima's sequel is going to have a female protagonist. And the voice actress is a queer activist. Something like that. I was like, oh, of course. Of course. Uh, why am I surprised? Now, this game has been in development for years. I don't know if they always plan to make the sequel star a female. But this was exactly the thing that Jono's who hated Ghost of Tsushima, won it for the game because they knew that that was going to undercut its success ultimately as a franchise. So people were mad. Journals were mad at Ghost of Tsushima when it first came out because that's the game that gamers rallied around thanks to uh, the, the whole bait and switch and the betrayal of The Last of Us Part Two. You had all those journals and YouTube circling the wagons for Neil Druckmann and uh, Last of Us Part Two and Abby and all that nonsense. So. When Ghost of Tsushima came out, that was like this huge statement that, yes, this is something that gamers want. Beautiful game, cool uh, male protagonist, even though Jin, like I said, I've said this before, Jin looked like a stockbroker or like uh, Yang Yeah, so I wasn't super inspired by him or his look, but I loved the game. And the thing is, there's a lot of woke elements in Ghost of Tsushima, but, you know, just having women in it doesn't make it woke. But, you know, you're fighting this old granny and, you know, she's a boss. and then. You know, the whole thing with the lesbian love uh, storyline and all this other different stuff that's in that game where it's like, you know, the way that a lot of the women are designed to defeat the male gaze, stuff like that. But overall, the game is so great. And it came out at a perfect time. Like I said, it was the perfect repost to The Last of Us Part Two. It ended up winning the gamers vote at the Game Rewards when everybody voted for that because Neil Druckmann is such a clown that he couldn't help but say, hey, look, everybody. Own the chuds by voting the Last of Us Part Two in the Gamer's Choice Award or whatever. And people saw that and was like, okay. And they all voted for <laughs> Ghost of Tsushima. And you had people like that bundle of sticks, Paul Tassi. But what I don't like is when females are pushed into roles just to make a statement. So I have been live streaming Ghost of Tsushima here on the channel, and I have been playing it quite a lot off stream, and it is fantastic. It is just such a good game. But what makes it so good are the characters, and usually when a character story is really good, people don't demand that it be changed. But of course, because Jin is a male, this game just isn't good enough, because now people 
people, including journalists, may I add, are asking Sucker Punch to make Ghost of Tsushima sequel female focus. So we are going to start with a Forbes article. Ghost of Tsushima 2 has a clear hero in the waiting, a legendary woman samurai. The author of this article is like Paul Tassie, so we know that he is comparing it to Last of Us Part 2. He did an article recently talking about why did Ghost of Tsushima receive such amazing ratings when The Last of Us Part 2 is an amazing game as well, and it received pretty poor ratings by users. So we know that's the game that he is comparing Ghost of Tsushima to. He wanted to own the chest. If you look at the actual article and the statements he makes in the article, He's saying he knows that people are going to say, we don't want a female character in this. And he's like, if anybody says, oh, why are we going to have a, a female samurai? There's no female samurais. Well, this character is based on a real life female warrior and samurai. So it makes sense to make, because he knew. But I also wanted to bring up this article by US Gamer. Now, the whole US Gamer team came together to really talk about their thoughts on Ghost of Tsushima and what they would want from a sequel. And they were asked by the interviewer, would you like to see that sequel focus on Jin, one of his supporting cast members, or a new character? And of course, they all gave the answer of female characters. Mike says, I've been pretty open that Jin's story was probably the least compelling in Ghost of Tsushima. Lady Masako is a bit older, but she still seems to be able to do the murder. What kind of wording is that? Do the murder, guys. The issue isn't that there's a female protagonist. The issue is why there is a female protagonist. Why is Gamora? For the journos, it's to undercut Ghost of Tsushima. It's to take it away from men. This is the whole thing. I just did a video about this. You know, this whole drive to take away what men have. So you have the men establish a franchise and then come behind them. You have to have a woman. And this happened several times. You know, it's happened in The Last of Us. So a lot of people was fine with that. I'm fine with Ellie if she took over. But of course, the whole way that they did things with The Last of Us Part Two kind of ruined people really being able to embrace the sequel with Ellie as the lead. But then you have, there's um, Hollow Knight. The sequel to Hollow Knight is going to have a female character. There's this game called Spelunky. Whereas the dude at first and then the second one, I think, is the daughter of the granddaughter. And there's a bunch of little indie games I've seen like that where it's like, okay, this is the sequel to this popular other game. Now it's starring a girl or a woman or whatever. And it's like, I need you to fix his suit. The suit is literal perfection. It will be. When it fits a woman. <laughs> you're doing this because you're taking everything away from men. It's like women have to be a part of everything, even if. Game's already popular. So I did this, I mentioned this in my last video where I talked about, you know, space invaders, male safe space invaders, even though men don't really need a safe space, just a space to be amongst themselves without women being involved. And so I just talked about this already where there's somebody thought they were owning the chuds by saying girls have always loved Star Wars from the beginning. And they had showed a picture of this, this guy or this girl's sister or friend who dressed up like Luke and ha ha. Girls have always loved to guess. Great. That's our point. The point is you don't need to change it for women. Women who love and appreciate this stuff have always loved and appreciated. You don't have to change anything for them. So they do this thing where they make, so Ghost of Shima is a huge success, right? Everybody loves it. So now they go, because it's a huge success, women are going to feel left out if you don't make the female protagonist uh, for the second game, which is not true. Nobody thinks like that. Only people who think like that are activists and journalists who don't care about games. Feminists who want to take these spaces from men. This isn't about if it's an original character like Eve and she's the star of Stellar Blade. I wouldn't want some male character taking this series from her. If it's Bayonetta, I wouldn't want the sequel to take the series from her. And they would never do that. But when it comes to men, they keep doing it. And now, again, this game has been in production who knows how many years. I don't know when they started it. So they were probably already planning on having a woman. They probably already knew that. They were going to be pushed to do that. And they probably have people at the studio who was already demanding that anyway. Because, again, if you look at the first game, there's a lot of this kind of woke stuff in it anyway. This strong female stuff anyway. And there are a lot of great characters. I like all those characters, you know, for the most part. But it's like, if women come to this, they come to it. If they don't like it, they don't have to be there. Nothing is hurting. Like, they're not being harmed by not actually being pander to. If they don't like the game, that's tough. Go. They can go do something else. This, this is not harming society that a woman goes, well, I would play a Ghost of Tsushima game, 
but it doesn't star a woman, so I won't play it. Okay, fine, don't play it. Like, that's not hurting her, and it's not hurting us. The thing is, you hurt yourself more when you do stuff like this, because despite the people coming out now, so I've seen people now talking about the fact that people are complaining about the fact that there's now going to be a female lead. It's not just that. People are saying that you're not continuing Jen's story. You're now putting a female lead. And this is something that we already knew journals have been pushing and pressuring for. And they do this all the time. Uh, Insomniac did it where Gamer said, don't put any more stealth missions with MJ in the sequel. They put more and they made MJ uglier. Journals complained about the cops. They took the cops out for the most part, right? So they do what game journals demand that they do. And then they hurt their games for that. Because I was looking at this, I think about this earlier, I'm looking at how successful Space Marines 2 is. And you have journals at Kotaku and stuff trying to write articles and at IGN trying to write articles saying, wow, the controversial comments by Saber CEO saying that games should be fun. That's controversial. And it's like, if you listen to these idiots, you wouldn't have had a huge success like Space Marines 2 because they do things to undercut it. Like I said, if if Warner Brothers had listened to uh, journos and activists about Hogwarts Legacy and canceled that game, they would have missed out on the biggest game of 2023. These stupid people who are enemies to the hobby actively do things to destroy the hobby and to take it away from their prime base. And you keep listening to them, you're only going to hurt yourself. So like I'm trying to say, so no matter how many people Try to defend this decision. You have people saying, of course, the Chuds are angry that you're playing as a woman. Again, that's not that. It's that the sequel has to be a woman. That just because the game is popular, now you have to take it from men. You have to take it from a male protagonist and give it to a woman. Now Now that it's successful, now a woman should be in charge of it. Now she has to be a focus. Otherwise, she's going to feel left out. You know, so it's despite people trying to defend it by saying, okay, the Chuds just don't want to play as a woman or they don't want... And also, she doesn't look fappable like Eve. So that's why people are complaining. You could say that all you want to. Like I always say, it doesn't matter how many times you try to shame gamers, you try to grandstand and virtue signal and be smug about it. The game will still fail because you can attack the people you call the vocal minority. But what's going to happen? When the game comes out, people are not going to buy it. That's it. You can't force them to buy it. IGN is not going to go to your Paul Tassi is not going to go to your house and make you buy the game. So... That's not the issue. The issue is just simply that. Defend it all you want to. But I'm telling you, as a gamer, this is not going to go over well. I'm sure people will get it. I don't think it's going to be a complete flop, obviously, like Concord or Dustborn. But I'm telling you, they're probably going to cut their base in half with this game. I'm pretty sure that's what's going to happen. I, I could be wrong. And for me, this is not even an issue of wanting it to fail so much as I can't even get past the point that you would do something like this. Like, I am quietly just going to not buy the game. It's not even a big, huge boycott or anything. I'm just going, okay, so you you did the thing that they told you to do, which you shouldn't have done, you didn't need to do. I'm not getting the game. And then it's not like you just hired a cool actress who's going to be into this. You hired this girl with, I got all pronouns. I'm gender fluid. It's like, okay, here we go. We're, we're going to see what happens over the next couple of months. We'll see if they put their foot in their mouths about this and make it worse. Because they seem like they can't help themselves. When activists take these properties over, they can't help but grandstand and virtue signal and be smug and get on a high horse and attack the customer base. We'll see if they do that. If they're smart, they'll just shut up and let the game come out, let people buy it, and let gamers fight about it and stay out of it. They're not going to do that, though. So we'll see. But it's just tiring to see how this is always treated as if this is an equal rights thing. So going back to... In my last video, I used a clip of Barbara Walters interviewing Sean Connery, and... I don't like playing golf with women. That's a crime. I don't go and insist playing with them. So why should they come and insist playing with me? Also, in the, in the golf club, when there's a room for men only, I think it's terrific. And why would they want to go in if they're not wanted there? Eh? Now... I suppose I could go and say, well, where's the ladies' club here? I must go and get some game to these wonderful 36 handicappers. And, you know what I mean? Equal time. Coming equal up with Equal rights. Her. Yeah. She's laughing talking about equal rights. What does equal rights have to do with some woman wanting to be in a room with men who just want to spend time with other men? Like, this is like saying it's equal rights for a woman to go to want to go into the men's restroom. Like, if men want to have a space where they just hang out amongst themselves, that's not... That's not being prejudiced. That's saying that 
Men and women are different. As men, we want to let our dicks hang out. We want to talk shit. We want to act in a way that we know we're not allowed to around women or we shouldn't around women. And it's not like if the women have their own club, it has to be less than what the men get. It's just that it would be like separate but equal. This is not, this is one of those cases where it's not like because of who you are intrinsically, I hate you. You can't be here. It's like, no, we're not saying keep you out of society. We're saying we have a club where it's just men getting together. And this clown, Barbara Walters is saying equal rights. It's not equal rights to be in the same room with a man who doesn't want you to be in there. And the only reason why they're keeping you out is because men have things that they want to do amongst themselves that don't involve you as a woman. That's all it is. But they turn it into all this other shit. And so that's why they treat making this female protagonist like it's this important thing to eat, like equal rights. And like I said earlier, it doesn't matter. Like a woman, if a woman doesn't want to play Ghost of Tsushima 2, Electric Boogaloo, because it stars Jen again, then she doesn't have to play it. But that doesn't hurt society in any way. And if women come to it, they know what to expect. They know what they're getting into. They're actually doing it because it doesn't pander to them for the most part. But whatever. Like I said, this is one of those videos where I know you're going to get the smug, yo dog, you tripping kinds of people in here who go, you get, you guys just hate a woman existing in a game. They're being obtuse. They're being full of shit. I, it, it doesn't bother me. I just think it's kind of interesting how they do this thing. They play this game, but they don't actually play the game they're defending. They play the game where they're defending it. But when the game comes out, they're not going to buy it. They're not going to play it because they don't care either. And then they're going to get mad, though, at people like me who go, yeah, I'm not buying this game because I know what this is about. This isn't about just, hey, we want to tell this cool story with a cool female protagonist. It's, okay, well, the first game got really successful. It got a lot of attention, and people criticized us for one thing or another. So we know with the second game, we have to make it star a female protagonist. Otherwise, journals are going to complain. Activists are going to complain. Not our actual customer base, but people who don't care about it. But we need to listen to them because they mean more than the people who are actually going to buy this game. I'm telling you, I'm pretty sure Sucker Punch has cut their sales at least in half by making this decision to have a female protagonist. Men want to play a cool male samurai. They don't want to play as a, a cool female samurai because they don't see women as cool female samurais. I mean, they got Lady Snowblood, stuff like that. But no, samurai is one of the things that men really want to see themselves as without being fake representation of, you know, making a black Yasuke version of it. Just a cool Japanese man as a samurai. Equal time, Coming equal up with rights. A, yeah. <laughs>